Welcome to today's business studies lesson. This lesson is brought to you by the Houghton Department of Education in partnership with Saibono Discovery Center, broadcast by Parama Research and Development. Today we look into the business studies and the main topic we look into is business venture and the subtopic we look into is your investment securities which is assessed in your paper too and this will be taught to you in term two. Now, let's look into what we should understand by the end of this lesson. Now, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to outline or discuss the following factors that should be considered when making an investment decision. You should be able to outline the return of investment, the risk, the investment term, the inflation rate, the taxation, and the liquidity. And you should further be able to outline the functions of the Johannesburg Security Exchange. And as we proceed, you should further be able to explain or discuss various types of investment opportunities and explain risks associated with each investment opportunity. Then you will also look into explaining or analyzing the following forms of investment whereby you will also be expected to do the impact, meaning the positives and negatives for government or RSA retail savings bond, unit trusts, shares and fixed deposit. And as we continue, you should further be able to, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to identify the following types of shares from given scenarios or statements, which is ordinary shares, preference shares, bonus shares, and founder shares. You should further be able to name or discuss types of investment, uh, types of preference shares. So when we're talking about types of preference shares, we'll be looking into this share, and it is the only share that has types of shares. And then when we are Proceeding, you should further be able to outline the rights of ordinary and preference shares. And then as we continue, you should be able to identify types of preference shares from a given scenario or statement. And differentiate between ordinary and preference shares. Now let us look into terminology that is important for our lesson. The first term is the main, obviously, the, the subtopic, which is investment. Investment or what is investment? Investment is, it refers to investing or saving money in order to yield a, a, a better return or to get a better return. We also have the Jonas Beck Security Exchange or JSE in short, which refers to a formal market where trading in shares compromising of all public companies uh, that have been listed. So we will be looking into the function of the Johannesburg Security Exchange to say what happens, what is the role, what is the function of this Johannesburg Security Exchange since we have seen that it's a formal market where trading of shares occurs. Then we also look into the term risk, which refers to the chance that the invested amount may reduce in value or be lost in total uh, over the period of time due to an unforeseen circumstance. Then we look into the term shares because there'll be a part whereby we'll be talking about types of shares and types of preference shares, which is it, is, it gives investors the opportunity to obtain part of ownership of a company. Then we also have dividends, which refer to a sum of money paid regularly by a company to its shareholders out of its uh, profit. This is considered to be returns for investing in a company. As we proceed, we have the term ordinary. The term ordinary refers to anything that has no special feature. Then we also have the term preference share, which refers to a share which entitles the holder to a fixed dividend whose payment takes priority over that of an ordinary share dividend. And we'll be talking about that when we discuss types of shares. Then we have the term redeem, which refers to regain or the, the process of regaining position of something in exchange for a payment. Then we have the term convert, which is 
similar to looking into change when we convert we are changing then we have the term cumulative which refers to increasing in quantity now let us look into the first part of our lesson which is discussing factors that must be considered before making an investment decision we look into six of those the first part is return on investment generally there will be a direct link between risk and return because when we're talking about return we're talking about the idea that when you have invested you take your money to a bank and then when you're taking your money to a bank you expect some particular return meaning you don't expect your money to come back as it is. So when we are talking about the return on investment, generally you should understand that before you invest, there will be some direct link there between risk and return. And the understanding should be now on bullet two, whereby we say the higher the risk investment yield, higher the return. So we are basically saying the higher the risk of an investment, the higher the return. Or if you are investing in a high risk investment, just know that there will be high, higher return. So when we're talking about higher returns, we're talking about the idea that if you have taken an investment that has high risk, chances of making more money, they are very high. But then again, when you have invested in low risk, chances of making less money is more. So that is the relationship there but return on investment refers to interest that can be gained dividends that can be gained from investing in shares and the capital gain that can be uh, achieved or gained from investing in property so what you get in return after investing hence it says if you have invested maybe a thousand years you can see on the picture it can improve to two to five hundred here it can improve to seven hundred here and it can improve maybe to a thousand years so that is return on investment to say it has to increase what you have invested has to increase then we also have investment period as another factor to be considered before making the investment decision so before investing think about how long you want to invest so the investment period now focuses on that to say this refers to the duration of the investment which may influence the return on investment so the longer the investment period as it says in the second bullet the higher the return because we know that if you have invested money for five years you will get you will get interest or returns for five years but if you have invested for three years it means you'll get returns for three years which will be a, a bit lower compared to someone who has invested for five years so the time here is the factor to say how long do you want to invest and you think about that and you think about what you can gain for from investing for a bit longer or from investing for a, a shorter period then we have inflation rate which now focuses on the idea that the return on investment should be higher than the inflation rate. remember the term inflation refers to the general increase in the prices of goods and services which now has an influence on the value of money because the rent may appreciate or the rent may uh, uh, depreciate so it is very key to understand that when you are about to invest look into the type of invested uh, investment and calculate how it will be affected by the inflation rate so a good investment would be an investment that the return on investment should always be higher than the inflation rate and another aspect is that the inflation has a positive effect on some investments such as property because when the general increase of price and goods go up we know that property will also appreciate meaning the property value would increase which is good for the investor who has invested in property then we have the term risk with the risk we are referring to the idea that there's some investments that will have low or medium risk in long term or in the short uh, term so when you are looking into shares shares have lower or medium risk over a long term period and shares with higher risks have a greater potential 
for higher returns. So we're talking about the chances of losing your money. So to say if you can invest in shares, chances of losing your shares will depend on the company performance. And you should know that we have types of shares. Some shares have high risk, some shares have medium risk. So you should be aware of that. So we are focusing on the chances of losing your money to say how can you lose your money? Is it low risk or high risk? It depends on the type of investment. Then we also look into taxation because some investments have tax implications. So a good investment should be an investment now which yields a good tax after tax return. So a good investment will yield a good what? After tax return and then as we proceed, tax rates are not necessarily the same for the different investment. Meaning before you invest, you think about the tax percentages to see how much tax will I be expected to pay for this particular investment. So it helps you to think before you actually partake in the process of investing to say, okay, for this particular investment, I'm expected maybe to pay 25%, but for the other one, I'm expected to pay 0%. So you, you, you consider your factors before uh, actually taking the investment. Then we also have liquidity. Liquidity now focuses on the issue of how easy it is for investor to convert their investment into cash because it says it is used to describe how the easy and the speed with which investors can convert an investment into cash for example an investment in a savings account or a unit trust will be easier to convert into cash what are we talking about when we are saying convert into cash we are saying from taking we are talking about the process of saying if you have invested how easy it is to go to the bank and say i want my investment in five days or to say i want my investment how long will it take to get your investment will it take uh, two months will it take three days will it take five days if it takes five days if it takes three days it means it is easy the liquidity rate is good for the investor but if now as an investor you cannot withdraw your money from the investment it means the liquidity rate is low and it's not good because if something unforeseen happens you will not be able to obtain your money from the investment so that is liquidity hence on the example they say an investment in a savings account which is an investment with the bank or with a, a, a unit trust will be easier to convert into cash than an investment in a fixed deposit which is usually deposited for a fixed period of time so it means you will be able to get your money from a savings account and a unit trust easier than getting your money from a fixed deposit because it is deposited or invested on a fixed period of time so that is what we are referring to is it easy to take your money from an investment and put it into a personal bank account that's what we are talking about so that is liquidity of an investment you think about it as well before making an investment decision now we move into the second part of our lesson which is functions of the jsa remember this is a market where companies and we're talking about public companies that are listed now public companies that are listed are allowed to sell their shares and try to attract investors. So the Johannesburg Security Exchange is a market where the trading of shares would occur between the publicly listed companies and your, your investors. Now, the function of the, the market or Johannesburg Security Exchange is the idea that it serves as an economic indicator in the South African market or in the South African economic condition. So it gives now investors an idea or people who are not in South Africa who want to understand the economy in South Africa, an idea to say what are the economic conditions in South Africa. Also, when we are looking into companies that are publicly listed those companies are companies that are very successful so 
those companies basically would have to report to JSE on how they are doing or on their performance. And as they report on their performance to say, our sales have improved from 2020, we had so much sales and now 2021, we have made more profits. It means they are giving an indication on the consumer behavior or how uh, the customers are buying their goods and services. So that would give now an indication or that would also be used to calculate how um, the economy is performing because it gives an idea on the issue that can customers or are customers being able to buy or not so it gives a clear picture or a picture at least on how the economy is doing hence you see the the, the, the traffic light here to say if now the, the, the economy is ready, it means more people are not buying. So large public companies would be able to give an indication to say we have seen a sale drop. And then another one would be moderate, which is yellow to say, okay, our economic conditions are better. People are buying, but they are not buying as usual. And then green light now for the investor would give an investor a clue to say, okay, now since the economic conditions are doing very well, one can invest in a public company. So that is one of the key functions of the joint back security exchange uh, as a function or as a marketplace or where shares are traded then it acts as a link between investors and public companies so the jse basically would link would ensure that it becomes what we call an intermediary, a middleman between the investors and the publicly listed company so the jse would be considered to be the JSE would be considered to be this part here. That is the JSE. It links the what? The investors with the public listed companies. So that is the function of the JSE. It acts as a link. So people who want to buy shares would be linked by the JSE to find out which companies are selling shares. So it acts as a link between the investors and the public companies. Furthermore, another function is that the JSE now ensures that small investors are invited to take part in the economy of the country through the buying and selling of shares and then another one is that it keeps now investors who have already now their function is not only to make sure that they meet it it doesn't only act as a link but it keeps investors informed on the share prices by publishing the share prices on the daily basis to inform them on how the company is performing so it gives a, a, a summary of the performance on a daily basis to say how is the company that you have invested in as an investor performing how are they doing then as it also raises primary capital by encouraging new investments in listed companies so it also encourages uh, these publicly listed companies to try and obtain more capital or raise more capital by encouraging new investments meaning more money so that the company can operate and grow and, and grow and then it regulates the market for dealing with shares meaning it controls the market for dealing with shares by giving maybe rules and restrictions on how to trade and it provides protection for investors and another aspect is that it encourages short-term investment and when we proceed now we are done with the functions of jse hoping you've understood just know that five or six of these points would allow you to get your maximum max during the exam now we look into types of investment opportunities and their risks factors the first one we look into as an investment opportunity now before i proceed with this understand that we'll be having uh, investment opportunities and we'll also have forms of investment with investment opportunities you need to know how to explain and you need to also know how to explain the risk associated with that particular investment uh, opportunity so when we are looking into the first one we have mutual funds and stock funds with mutual funds and stock funds it is an informal savings scheme to which relatively a small group of people contribute 
they contribute money obviously furthermore it encourages people to save money each month for a specific reason this happens a lot in the townships whereby you see uh, people contributing money on a monthly basis so that they are able to save and then share the money maybe by december so that is your mutual funds or stock funds then the risk associated with this investment opportunity is the idea that money in the savings account is a safe investment but with low interest rates because what they normally do they contribute each month and they save the money they save the money into a bank which will be a, a money saved in a savings account and it makes it a safe investment but with low interest rate so it means it is safe because it may not be affected by economic conditions and then schemers who claim to be running the stock files sometimes might be actually running illegal pyramid schemes which can affect now or it can lead to people losing their investment so that is the risk now associated with the mutual funds or stock fails then as we proceed we have another type of investment opportunity which is managed portfolio with managed portfolio we are looking into now a, a investment which is more of a, a management of the investment of a particular individual so an investor would instruct an investor would instruct a bank or a financial institution as you can see here which advises so the investor would instruct a bank or a financial advisor to manage his or her various investment portfolio investment as one portfolio if the portfolio does not perform well as expected the portfolio or parts thereof may be changed with or without informing the investors so the first part becomes critical to say the investor would instruct a bank or a financial advisor to manage his or her what various investments as one or as a one portfolio so when you're looking into it maybe this side it might be a savings account then this portfolio might be your fixed deposit maybe this portfolio might be investment in shares so basically an individual would be asking a bank or a financial advisor to manage all these investments as one and therefore they they are allowing the bank or the financial advisor to do what to say if the portfolio does not perform well or as expected the portfolio or past thereof may be changed with or without informing the investor so the investor maybe might withdraw some money from the shares try to sell them and invest more money from the savings or from the fixed deposit so that's what we are referring to then the risk associated with managed portfolio is basically the risk is lower over a long term or a period and then investments are made in various sectors or companies therefore the risk is spread and better managed by the portfolio manager so the advantage is that maybe the investor has three to four investments and the risk associated with the different investments are not the same so the risk it is spread so it becomes better because if one portfolio or one part of the portfolio is not doing well the others will not be affected so it becomes the advantage when it comes to that then we look into another type of investment opportunity which is 32 days notice account or call deposits when we are looking into this one money is invested at a fixed rate although withdrawals may be may be made provided the bank is given 32 days notice of the withdrawal it aims more interest than a current or savings account but less interest than a fixed deposit so that is your 32 days notice account or call deposit which is normally done with the bank and the risk associated with this is 
the risk is very low meaning chances of losing your money they are very low as the investment plus interest will be paid out on the maturity date of the investment and interest is calculated on a daily balance accelerating the value or return on investment or lowering the risk of the investor so that is your daily two days notice account and then we also have debentures here i need you to pay attention and focus because this part now needs you to concentrate so that i explain now a debenture is an investment on the following basis it is issued now by a company it is issued by a company to arise borrowed capital from the public that's what so the issue here is to say what is being issued here what is being issued is a certificate the name of the certificate is called a debenture so it is a debenture certificate which is issued to borrow capital from the public so the lender which is the public now or the debenture holder agrees to lend money to the company on certain conditions for a certain period and the debenture holder are creditors as the company is liable to repay the amount of debentures so what basically happens is that a company would issue a certificate which we call a debenture and a debenture is used to borrow money from the public so it's basically a situation whereby a company borrows money from the what now borrows money from the from the public so that is the debenture it allows the companies to borrow money from the public so the proof that the public would have borrowed the company money would be the debenture certificate because it makes now the person who has borrowed the company money a debenture holder who agrees to lend money to the company on certain conditions for a certain period and a debenture holder are creditors as the company is liable to repay them the amount of debentures that shall have received by the company and most types of debentures can be traded on jse so some companies will not issue out shares they will issue out debenture uh, certificate to try and obtain money from the public and make the public that would have borrowed the money debenture holders and debenture holders receive annual interest payment based on the terms and amount of debenture held so when you are looking into shares and looking into debentures they are similar but the difference is the idea that when you buy shares you would be buying part of the ownership of the company but when you are investing now in debentures you are borrowing the company money and you become now a creditor because you have borrowed the company money and the type of creditor you become you become a creditor which we call a debenture holder so your proof would be the debenture certificate which is now something that would be given to you to certify you or to confirm that you have borrowed the company Company money and the advantage now is that the debenture holders will receive an annual interest payment in the process so since you have borrowed the company money on each and every year you would be getting interest for borrowing the company money until they return the actual amount and the risk now is that debentures have low risk as they need to be paid back that is the advantage and then companies are liable to repay the amount of debentures plus interest which increases the risk for them which decreases the risk for the investor so the risk is decreased when it comes to investing in debentures then we proceed to another type of investment which we call the business ventures or venture capital now venture capital is given by an investor or businesses to start up or expand a business in return to have a share in a new or expanded business so venture capital is basically when a person is starting a business or when a person adds money or contributes money to expand an existing business and then investors should know the type of business or market or the economic conditions before a business is bought or started so 
before a business can be started there the, the, the investor should be aware of the market conditions the customers the demand to say when are the customers going to buy more how much profit can i make from this business they should also know the economic conditions to say are they allowing the business to make money or not and then furthermore buying a franchise or an existing business will be successful if the investor has done proper research or they understand exactly what he or she is investing in that would be make it profitable to buy a franchise that is already known the risk is the risk is there is high risk for investors if research is not properly done because the business you might buy a business and then it doesn't become profitable which would mean now you have lost your total value of amount invested and then inexperienced business owners that make wrong business decisions may experience big losses and closing down of an existing business, which will mean now the total value of the amount invested has been lost. And remember, we are talking about risk, which is the chances of losing the amount invested. Then we also look into the last part now, which is when we're looking to types of investment opportunities, which is the endowment or life insurance policies or retirement annuities. These are a uh, monthly payment is paid to an insurance company with the expectancy of receiving a predetermined amount of money on a date in the future. So you can pay it on endowment or life insurance when one passes away or when one reaches a particular age. So this is done or this investment is done to provide for future expenses or to give peace of mind to the dependents of the insured so that they can be financially sustained so the father can pay that the mother can pay that so that the kids in future would be financially sustained then the investment is low risk as the insured amount will be paid out regardless of the circumstances However, the risk that can be there is that only the closing down or bankruptcy of the insurance company may result in losing the monthly contributions made up to close down the to close down the company. So that can lead to the investor losing their money or their monthly contribution. Then we move to forms of investment. Now, you should know with what we just looked at, which is the types of investment opportunities. We had six investment opportunities. The first one was stock fails. We looked into managed portfolio. We looked into debentures. We looked into 32 days notice account. We looked into your business venture and life insurance. We have six investment opportunities, but we have now forms of investment, meaning we have four forms of investment. This would be uh, assessed using the scenario and it will also be assessed using the question explain discuss or evaluate the impact you'd be expected to know the positives and negatives now the first part is now the first part is the rsa retails savings bond and the other one is the unit trust and the other one is shares and the other one is fixed deposit we will be looking into explaining each and looking into the impact which is your positives and negatives the first investment form is your rsa retail savings bond the rsa retail savings bond it is there or it was developed to encourage saving and the south african government offers south african citizens the opportunity to invest in savings bond and interest with this investment is aimed twice a year so that is your rsa retail savings bond the impact now we are looking into positives and negatives of investing in this particular uh, investment opportunity which is the rsa retail savings bond the advantage is that there are guaranteed returns as interest is fixed for the whole investment period so there is guarantee that your money will come back definitely that is the advantage interest now 
or interest rates are market related and will attract more investors and then interest can be received twice so this is an advantage for the investor and then there are no charges cost and commissions payable on this type of investment so when you start investing there's no charges cost or commissions or administration fees before you can invest however the negatives is that a minimum of 1000 must be invested which may be difficult for some small investors to contribute and then retail bonds are not freely transferable amongst investors it means if you need your money you cannot sell these types of uh, these types of uh, investment form to another person and then investors need to have a valid south african identification and this may discourage foreigners and then we also have penalties are charged for early withdrawals if the saving is less than 12 months you will be not or you will be allowed to withdraw but there would be penalties if you withdraw before 12 months meaning before a year so it would be advisable to make sure that at least you withdraw after a year has passed then we have unit trust the investment of a number of investors are pulled together in a unit trust fund and they are managed by a fund or a portfolio manager or an expert so that is your unit trust so basically here it can be poor it can be bought directly from an accredited service provider and we are talking about a situation to say now a number of investors are pulled together so the key here is that investors or investments of a number of investors are pulled together an example can be the idea to say this investor uh, this investors hundred thousand and this investors hundred thousand together with this investors hundred thousand they're pulled together and then they'll be invested in various investment opportunities which now gives them more advantages because when we combine the hundred thousand this and that one and that one we have together three hundred thousand which would make them a better return together but then let us look into the positives of investing in this investment one it is managed by a fund manager who buys shares on the stock exchange or the Johannesburg security exchange Another advantage, it is easy to cash in when an investor needs money. So basically, when the investor wants to take their money, their liquidity rate is very fast. Then as we proceed, a small amount can be invested per year. That is another advantage. These advantages, however, share prices may fluctuate. Remember, the fund manager would invest on the stock exchange, meaning mainly they would invest in shares. Now, when they invest in shares, the share prices may fluctuate. So sometimes they might be performing very well, but sometimes they can also downgrade, So, which is a disadvantage. It is not good for people who want to invest for a short period because, as we said, shares will make profit in the long run. So it is not good for people who want to invest in a short period. Then it is not good for people who want to avoid risks at all costs. And so that's one thing we should understand with the unit trust is that the investors uh, investments are pulled together meaning we're not talking about one person we're talking about five we're talking about ten we might be talking about hundred people to say their money is pulled together and it is managed by a portfolio manager who buys shares in the stock uh, exchange so they would buy shares that are high risk and shares that are low risk to ensure that they spread the risk and to ensure that more money is generated to say when this company is not performing we know that the other company will be performing then we look into shares now what are shares what are we referring to companies sell or issue company a portion of its ownership to shareholders in the form of shares on the open market to obtain capital so for companies to have capital capital is the money we use to start a business so for companies to have that money they need to sell shares so that people buy shares and they use the money that people have bought shares for to operate the company so that is your shares the portion of ownership issued to ensure that now the company op 
or obtains capital when you're looking into the impact of shares or ordinary shares is that the shares the advantage with shares is that they can be freely transferred or traded on jse meaning an investor if they need their money they can decide to say let me go and sell the shares to someone else then another advantage is that shareholders have the voting rights at an annual general meeting meaning now shareholders have a right to contribute on how the company is to be ran and then investing in shares can provide solid returns at retirement age then as we proceed the negatives now is the idea that shareholders may receive less dividends or no dividends when company profits are low remember we have two we have four types of shares but the impact here focuses on ordinary shares so the challenge of investing in ordinary shares that the shareholder may receive less dividends or no dividends when company profits are low and then another issue is that companies have no legal obligation to pay dividends to shareholders and then the risk may be high as investments may be lost when companies are liquidated so that is also another challenge because when the company is being liquidated everything that is owned by the company is sold and after it has been sold then it is used to pay the liabilities that the company has and then after those liabilities now whatever that is left it is shared with the shareholders starting with the preference shareholders and then ending with the ordinary uh, shareholders which is now the impact that we are analyzing to say there's high risk here because if there's no money left or because the investment might be lost when the company is being liquidated then we have fixed deposit which now is money cannot be withdrawn or added during the period of deposit when you have invested in fixed deposit and then investors have to be certain that they will not need their money before they invest in a fixed deposit because their money will be fixed for the period of the deposit so basically when we're talking about a fixed deposit we're talking about the idea that the interest would be fixed and we know that a graph that is showing that interest is fixed would be a straight line to say now the interest will not be fixed if we are deciding to say it's eight percent then it will be eight percent so it means the interest will always be around eight percent but if it happens now that the inflation grows and then it becomes a disadvantage than when the interest is lower or the inflation is lower so the interest will be fixed it will not fluctuate according to the market or economic conditions it will always be a straight line when we are looking at it in a form of a graph then when we look into the impact what are the advantages interest is aimed on a fixed rate regardless of the changes in the economic climate that's the advantage if the economic climate or is very very is not good it means the interest will stay at the same level however the period of investment can be forever a short medium or long term then another one investors can choose the investment period that suits them so that also makes it makes it an advantage then when you're looking into disadvantages the investors cannot withdraw their funds before the maturity date if you have decided three years you will only get your money after three years then there's low re lower returns compared to other investments that's also another issue there's lower returns compared to other investments and it may not outperform the effects of inflation over the long term because the interest is fixed so it will not uh, outperform the effect of inflation because inflation most of the time increases the prices of goods and services so now you should be smart when you decide on investing on this form of investment then we are done with the forms of investment remember here you should know the impact the positives and negatives your your positives and your negatives will be used to develop scenarios so be careful of that make sure that you know what they comprise of then types of shares we'll be looking into types of shares we have four types of shares the first one is your ordinary shares we have preference shares we have bonus shares together with your founders shares so let's explain the meaning of each we'll start with the founders shares 
the founder shares they are issued to founders or incorporators or promoters of the company meaning they're the ones who have those shares and they receive dividends after all other shareholders were paid and then another one is the idea that founders shares are shares that are given to people who have started the company or incorporators or promoters of a company and you should be aware that they receive the dividends after all other shareholders were paid and then we also have bonus shares now bonus shares are shares that are given in a form of payment now payment in a form of shares to shareholders why are they paying the shareholders they are issued to compensate for unpaid dividends so they become a payment because in some uh, uh, companies you would find that the company didn't perform well in 2021 or in 2020 so if it didn't perform well due maybe to covid and then shareholders did not receive their dividends their compensation or their payment would be to increase their number of shares so that they have now maybe more power to vote during the the, the 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 AGM or they have more power now to decide during the the AGM so they will be paid through increasing the number of their shares than to be paid via the dividends which is the return on investment for investing in shares then another one is that shareholders will own more shares and collect more dividends in the future so it becomes an advantage with bonus shares because if maybe you had 100 shares and you didn't receive maybe dividends in 2020 and 21 the company can say we will pay you by giving you maybe 100 more shares meaning in the future you are no longer owning 100 shares but you are owning now 200 shares so it becomes an advantage for a business or for the investor shareholders receive less shares without being required to pay for them so the, the, the shareholders will be receiving shares without being required to pay for them as i said because this will come as bonus this will come as bonus because you were not compensated for dividends due to uh, economic conditions uh, like your COVID-19, we know it caused uh, a lot of problems for so many companies since they, they were not able to operate. So it will increase the, the share percentage of an owner. If maybe they had 10% shareholding, maybe they can be having 20% due to an increase in the bonus or in the increase in the shares. Then we have now ordinary shares. Ordinary shares only receive dividends when profit is made. We should be aware companies need shareholders for it to operate and then people buy shares and the shares that they normally buy is either your ordinary or your preference so when you are buying ordinary shares you should know what is your ordinary shares so ordinary shares are those types of shares that will only receive dividends when profit is made meaning if the company has made profit then they receive dividends but the issue is that what are we referring to what are we talking about when we are saying dividends dividends refers to return return on investment so if you if you're buying shares your return on investing in shares is basically dividends we don't call it interest when you invest with the bank your return in investment is called interest but when you are buying shares your return in investment is called dividends then as we proceed and you should be aware very key ordinary shares only receive dividends when profit is made if the company hasn't made profit they receive nothing there's no entitlement to say you are supposed to be paid dividends you are only paid dividends when the company has made money normally the higher the net profit the higher the dividends that's the advantage if the company has made more profit the the shareholders who are owning ordinary shares would be receiving higher dividends because the profit the profit is high furthermore shareholders are the last to be paid if the company is declared bankrupt or liquidated now if it happens that the company has performed badly shareholders would be the last 
to be paid so that is your ordinary shares meaning in a case of liquidation in a case remember liquidation is a process whereby the company is closing down and selling all their assets after selling all their assets they pay all their their liabilities and whatever that is left they will start with the shareholders we call a preference and then after paying preferences they come to ordinary and whatever that is left there would be shared by the ordinary so that is what you should know when you want to invest in uh, ordinary shares to say what are the conditions then you should know that the advantage now this becomes an advantage to say the normally the net profit the higher the net profit the higher the dividends then what are the rights of ordinary shareholders their right is that they are able to vote at an annual general meeting another one is that they are able to attend the annual general meeting to learn about the company's performance another issue is the idea that when they are attending now in the meeting they are able to vote and contribute ideas on how maybe the company performance can improve for an example and then they are also able to attend a meeting and they receive interim and annual reports your interim maybe is your six months report on how the company is performing and your annual report is a 12 month report on how the company has been performing and then when it comes to claiming of company assets they claim on company assets in an event of bankruptcy but after all other creditors and preferential shareholders have been paid and then when you're thinking about creditors creditors can be what we talked about like your debenture your debenture becomes one of the company's creditor because a company would use a debenture to borrow what? To borrow money from the public. So they have to start. Remember when we're looking into the risk of a debenture, we said companies have to pay what uh, they, they, they got from the debenture holders. They are entitled to do so. So the first people would be the debenture holders and then it will come to uh, preference holders and then, then the ordinary uh, shareholders would be considered after then when you're looking into preferences shareholders receive a fixed rate of return they receive a fixed rate of return and then these shareholders enjoy preferential rights to dividends or repayments over the ordinary shares now you should be careful now we are talking about preference shareholders we talked about ordinary now we are talking about preference shareholders remember when we're talking about preferring something it means it comes first it has some particular advantages than others so preference shareholders these shareholders will receive a fixed rate of return so whether the company has made more profit or less they will receive fixed if the agreement is for them to receive 20,000 of the preference shares whether the company has made uh, profit or not they will receive a fixed rate of return and remember the return on investment for uh, investing in shares is what we call dividends so what we call dividends now these rights or these shares enjoy preferential rights to dividends or repayment over ordinary shares it means before the ordinary shareholders can be paid the first people to be paid are the preference shareholders because they enjoy the preferential rights to dividends or repayment over the ordinary shareholders then shareholders have the preferred claim on company assets in an event of bankruptcy or liquidation so in a in an event of bankruptcy when the company is closing down the people would get their money back first would be the preference shareholders they get the first bit so that is the advantage they are preferred when we're looking into their rights now the rights of preference shareholders they have the following rights they have the right to receive dividends regardless of how much profit are made so they have that right they receive dividends regardless of how much profits were made or are made and then they receive a fixed rate of dividends as i said twenty thousand. whether the company has made more money or not they would be receiving what is on the agreement but they they also have the advantage or they have the right to be to be paid first or enjoy preferential rights to dividends and then another one is that they only have a voting rights at an annual general meeting under particular circumstances that's when they will be allowed to vote but on a normal basis they don't vote then when we're looking now into the difference between ordinary and preference shares ordinary shares 
ordinary shares only receive dividends when profit is made. While preference shareholders, some, let's be clear, some, because we'll be talking about types of preference shares, and you'll see why we say some types of these shares receive what dividends regardless of the profit made and then normally the higher the profit the higher the dividends however when it comes to dividends being paid preference shareholders receive a fixed rate on return is paid on these types of shares then shareholders are the last to be paid if the company is declared bankrupt or liquidated meaning if the company is being closed down they are the last to be paid but when you are looking into preference, shareholders have a preferred claim on companies' what assets in the event of bankruptcy or liquidation. So, in a case whereby the company is closing down with this, uh, with preference shares, they are the first, they are the preferred, they are the first to claim from the company assets or to get their money back. So, when you are looking into this difference, the first part looks into saying dividends is paid when. So the issue is that dividends are paid when? Decide when the profit is made. Decide is paid some whether profit is made or not. Then normally the higher the profit, the higher the. So when you're looking into the rate, this side, the rate of dividends, the rate would be, would depend. It would fluctuate according to the profit. But then when you're looking into preference, the rate of dividends is fixed. Just know that it's fixed. Then, when it comes to liquidation here, liquidation becomes the factor to say when you are thinking about it and when you want to answer, when during liquidation, who claims first? Preference shareholders, ordinary shareholders are the last to claim. But then, when you are looking into preference, they are the preferred, as the name says, preference shares. They are the preferred uh, to claim first before others in a case of liquidation when the company is closing down. Then, types of preference shares we have. Now we look into types of preference shares. We have participating, we have non-participating, we have cumulative, and we also have non-cumulative together with redeemable, non-redeemable, and convertible, non-convertible. So you can see there's rhyme in there. Participating, non-participating, cumulative, non-cumulative, redeemable, non-redeemable, convertible, non-convertible so you can make a song there using that so you should know that if i know participating i know cumulative i know redeemable i know convertible then with the others you just add non-participating non-cumulative non-redeemable non-convertible then you have your eight types of preferences now let's explain this Preferences. The first part is your participating preferences. These shareholders are guaranteed a minimum fixed dividends. They are guaranteed their dividends. And another one is that they are entitled to share in any now surplus company profit. So they can get an extra uh, from their dividends from that. So that is your participating and they receive higher dividends when the company performs very well due to the idea that they get surplus company profits because they are called the participating preference shares and this is because they are of high value or they are very expensive as shares then when you're looking into non-participating preference shares or ordinary preference shares your non-participating now preference shares they receive now or shareholders receive an amount equal to the initial investment plus accrued or unpaid dividends upon liquidation. So that is that. And they do not have the right to participate in profits or surplus profits after equity shareholders have been paid dividends. So what they're basically saying with non-participating, they're talking about the idea that whether the company has made profit and they were not paid dividends on a particular, they will receive all the dividends that they have or they were entitled to on a particular year. Because remember, when you're talking about preferences, we're talking about shareholders that would receive fixed dividends. 
their dividends would be fixed meaning they would not change it would be 20,000 and more and when we are looking into that is 20 but with participating as we said they receive surplus so they can get extra because they are called participating preference shareholders now with non-participating they will not get extra dividends in a case of surplus profit and then they're entitled to receive only a fixed rate of dividends every year without any surplus then as we proceed we have cumulative now these shareholders are compensated for past dividends that were not paid out when profits were too low to declare dividends or when they were not able to receive dividends were due to maybe previous economic conditions by maybe the company so when you're talking about cumulative we are saying shareholders will be compensated meaning they will be paid for their past dividends that were not paid out when profits were too low to declare dividends or when they did not receive dividends or receive dividends that were not previously paid out that is your cumulative so basically let's say we have 20 20 we have 20 21 and now we have 20 22 so what we are saying is that shareholders are entitled to a fixed rate let's say their fixed rate of dividends is twenty thousand. remember this is a return they should get this is the return they should get per year but let's say during 2020 they were not compensated they didn't get but 2021 as well let's say they also didn't get now 2022 the company performs well what are we saying we are saying shareholders have to be compensated for past dividends for past what dividends that were not paid out so before the company can pay this twenty thousand, they need to calculate what was not paid out in 2020 and what was not paid out in 2021 which will total to what sixty thousand because it has to be the twenty thousand for the twenty thousand for 2020 the twenty thousand for 2021 together with the twenty thousand for 2022 so that will total to 60,000 of dividends because with cumulative preference shares shareholders are compensated or they are paid for past dividends that were not paid out what were the past dividends that were not paid out it was the dividends for 2021 and dividends for 2020 so when we combine is 40 plus the 2020 uh, 2022 dividends together they make 60,000 but then when we look now into the non-cumulative preference shares, shareholders are not compensated for the past dividends that were not paid out when profits were too low. So that is non-cumulative, but with cumulative, they will be paid out dividends that were not paid from the previous year. Then when we're looking into types of preference shares as we continue we also have a redeemable preference shares these are shares that can be redeemed or bought back these are shares that can be redeemed or bought back at an option of the issuing company either at a fixed rate or on a specific date or over a certain period of time so when a company sells these types of shares maybe they will issue out here let's say they issue out 200 shares they're saying when we are selling these shares but at an option of buying them back we are saying we will buy them back after three years so as we are saying shares can be redeemed or bought back at the option of the issuing company either at the fact a fixed rate on a specific date or over a certain period of time so they are selling them with an option to say they will buy the shares back after a certain period maybe it's because the company a company would opt to sell your your redeemable preference shares because maybe they want to fix a particular financial situation maybe they need a uh, capital to uh, to to fund uh, expansion of a particular plant or expansion of a particular department so when they see that they don't want to go to the bank or they don't want to borrow money from any financial uh, institution they would issue these types of shares which we call redeemable preference shares to say we 
are going to sell uh, we are going to issue these shares and allow people to buy them so that we have the capital and then when we have the money and we are sorted with the growth then we will buy them back from the owners but at a fixed rate let's be clear the fixed rate will be stipulated on the agreement so that is your redeemable shares and then they will be able to be bought back so it means shareholders the company will sell to shareholders and then with an option of buying them back from shareholders meaning the money will start by coming to the company and then after the money has came back to the company the company will do their operations and return the money to the shareholders so that shares can go back to the company then non-redeemable preferences uh, those are shares that can only be bought back when the company closes down for reasons that are other than bankruptcy. So basically this talks to the idea that the company only buys back uh, shares when now the company is closing down. So that is your non preference shares because remember if the company is saying they are closing down and they're giving the money you have invested back is basically saying they we are giving you the money you have invested back which is your uh, money that you use to buy the shares then we also have convertible preference shares these now are shares that can be converted into a predetermined number of ordinary shares on the date specified when the preference shares were issued so that is your convertible so they can be converted from preference to ordinary why would one convert uh, their preference shares to ordinary so that they make more money so one shares these types of preference shares can be converted into a predetermined number of now uh, ordinary shares it means when you buy these types of shares you are given a predetermined number that can be converted let's say you have bought 200 shares and then you can be given an option to say out of the 200 you bought 100 can be converted into ordinary on a, on a particular date or on a specific date so that's your convertible but when you're looking into non-convertible preference shares shares cannot be converted into ordinary shares now we are done with that we have an activity this activity is just there to give you a clue to say okay when you are assessed during the exam the same question can be asked but there are methods that can be used for instance when you're looking into one and two it can be used to ask one part of the content which is factors to be or that should be considered when making an investment decision or investment decisions and then the other one would be saying explain how the following factors influence the decision to invest so you see you're, you're having the same question but it has it has been phrased differently the other one gives you ideas to say which investment option are we talking about but the other one just says discuss four meaning you choose any four of your investment decisions but you should know this during exam know the number of concepts you are dealing with when we're talking about factors to be considered before making an investment decision know that you have six factors to think about when we are talking about types of investment opportunities know that we have six investment uh, opportunities when we are talking about forms of investment know that we have four forms of investment when we are talking about types of shares know that we have four types of shares and then when we are talking about types of preferences know that we have eight so that when they ask you a question you know what you should do and you know how to guess if you are not prepared but if you don't know the structure hence the exam guideline becomes very very important just know that so that you are able to structure your notes properly and it will help you to remember because you will be having organized notes or organized work so if the question says investment factors you should know that oh they are talking about return on investment they are talking about investment term or period they are talking about inflation so you can choose from those so because for instance this is 12 marks and it is expecting you to write four factors to be considered how are we going to mark when you give us return on investment you already get two when you explain you get one so that's 
why I'm saying make sure that your work is organized. Make sure that you know the number of concepts you are dealing with. Make sure that you know that, like for instance, this question says explain the function of JSE. Know that when we are talking about the functions of JSE, you will be expected to explain. There's no concept and explaining with the functions of JSE. There will be just explanations and you get two marks for explanations. But when you're looking into factors, to be considered there's a factor and there's an explanation for a factor or there's a concept and an explanation for that particular concept so just know those basics so that you are able to organize your work in a better way so when you're looking into now answers to this for instance four factors to be considered can be return on investment when you have identified or when you remember your return on investment is two marks and then it will be one mark for explanation one Generally, there will be direct link between risk and return. Investment period and this we consider to be max. Then investment period 2 because the sub max here should be 3. Then investment period 2. This refers to the duration of investment which may influence the return on investment 1. You get another 3 sub max. Then we move to another one. Inflation rate 2. The return on investment should be higher than the inflation. You see, you are explaining your concept. Two marks for just explaining, then one mark for uh, two marks for identifying or writing the concept, and one mark for explanation. Then you get your three again. You already have nine. Then risk two marks. Shares have low or medium risk over long term. One mark for that. So already you have your another three, and this is considered to be max. This is max. Why is max based on sub max? Sub max. Then the total already is 12. When you are moving to other concepts, it saves you time when you are also studying. So taxation will do the same. 2, 1 for explanation, max for this one. 2, 1 for explanation, max for this one. And you get your 3, your 3, but your total again should be 12. Then we move to now functions of JSE. There's no concept. You are just expected to explain. What is the function of JSE? It serves as an indicator of the economic conditions. Two marks for that. It acts as a link between the investors and the public companies. Small companies are invited to take part in the economy of the country through buying and selling of shares. It keeps investors informed on share prices by publishing the share prices on a daily basis. It raises primary capital by encouraging new investments in listed companies. So already one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you already received eight and above. So you get your eight there and maximum for the other factors. So you should also look into your question papers, your previous question papers, the mark allocation in section B, because whatever we are dealing with is section B. It has changed from eight marks to now having two, four, or six in your section B. So most of the time, the differences would be marked out of four, whereby you just have to know one concept for the other, one concept for the other, so that you get your maximum marks. So just be familiar with the previous question papers and know that we have split the question papers to paper one and paper two and know the topics for that paper one and for that paper two. Hence, I'm saying when I start my lesson, I emphasize this is paper two, this is paper one, this is paper two. Now we have a scenario. You should also know now how to analyze the scenario. Let me read the scenario with you again. Read the scenario below and answer questions that for John inherited. 350000 from his mother. He wants to invest this amount in a safe and low-risk investment option with guaranteed returns where no charges, fees, or commissions are payable. Now, identify the type of investment opportunity that will suit John's uh, requirements and motivate your answer by quoting from the scenario for three months. Discuss any other three types of investment opportunities and the risk factors of each. Now, the solution there was supposed to be retail savings bond, two marks, and one mark for the motivation. He wants to invest this amount in a safe or low risk investment option with a guaranteed return. So it makes it now your RSA retail savings bond because with this one is safe and low risk and they are guaranteed returns. Remember, this is one of the positives of your RSA retail savings bond. So that's three marks for that. 
as we proceed now when you're discussing other types of investment opportunities you have your mutual funds or stock funds that's two marks it is an informal saving scheme which uh, to which relatively small group of people contribute and then it is managed a managed portfolio as well two marks for that and an investor instructs a bank or financial advisor to manage his or her various investment in one portfolio and then business venture two marks for that as well business ventures given by an investor or a business to start or expand a business in return to having a share in a new expanded business that's how you get your nine but remember you are not limited to these three you can choose others especially if they are saying any other any other then we have now the other part which now looks into statements identify the types of shares represented by each statement below shares now we need to be clear types of shares meaning you have to be thinking about four options because you have four types of shares now shares are issued to existing shareholders as compensation for lost dividends we also have shares receive their dividends before other shareholders receive their dividends before others can be paid out and then these shares are issued to shareholders who started the company and then these shareholders may receive higher dividends when the company has made large profits <clears throat> And then we also have to outline the rights of ordinary or preference shares or shareholders and then differentiate between ordinary and preference shares now what are the solutions there these are bonus shares to max correct because shares are issued to existing shareholders as compensation for loss meaning they are given as compensation for those dividends that they did not receive then when we look into the other part shareholders receive dividends before others can be paid out that's two marks and then that is your preference shares because they have preferential right of dividends and then shareholders are or these shares are issued to shareholders who started the company founders that's two and then these shareholders receive higher dividends when company has made larger profits too as well then you get your eight then other questions now the rights outline the rights of ordinary and preference shareholders what are the rights of ordinary they have a right to vote at an annual general meeting learn about the company's performance receive interim or annual reports and claim on company assets in an event of bankruptcy furthermore rights of preference shareholders they receive dividends regardless of how much profits are made they receive a fixed rate of dividends they are paid first or enjoy preferential uh, rights to dividends and they only have a voting right at an annual general meeting under certain circumstances as zero eight then differences between the two remember one it should be based on the dividends who received the dividends on what condition or when they receive dividends only when profits have been made as two and then with preference some of these types of shares receive dividends regardless of the profit made normally the higher the profit the higher the dividends a fixed rate of return is paid on this type that's how you get your eight and shareholders are the last to be paid when companies liquidated shareholders are the preferred on claim on company assets in an event of bankruptcy that's how you get your eight then summary of our lesson we looked into outlining or discussing the following factors your return on investment your risk your investment term or period your inflation rate taxation and liquidity those were the factors to be considered before making an investment decision we also outlined the functions of jse and when you're looking into types of shares we looked into ordinary shares preference shares bonus shares and founder shares and we also looked into types of preference shares and outlined the rights of ordinary and preference shareholders and differentiated between ordinary and preference shares so that was our lesson remember you should study take all the tips i gave you know the concepts structure your notes properly so that you can get all the marks keep well goodbye